Hello, and welcome to the Sparta Group podcast. We aim to provide you with up-to-date interviews and debate with opinion leaders in the health, well-being, rehabilitation, and mental health space, from our studio or from conferences. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Anthony of Sparta Health, and today we'll be taking a look at archetypes. Now, archetypes are something you might not have heard of, and it's a topic that can actually be quite complicated to explain. Essentially, the overriding idea of an archetype is something that applies to every single one of us. It's a way that we can understand more about how our minds work, what motivates us, and what ultimately the point of everything is. So knowing about archetypes can actually put a lot of things into perspective, and can really help us to understand what is really important and what matters to us most. Archetypes literally embody the entire universal human experience. So let's find out more. So what exactly is an archetype? Well, there isn't exactly a one word or straightforward answer to this, as an archetype isn't really just one thing. It can relate to behaviour, a statement, a theme, or an overarching model that other statements and ideas merge from or into. It is most commonly known as the first form or principle, which means that it's the original type from which other ideas and patterns are stemmed from. Carl Jung was the person who created archetypes and presented the argument that an archetype is the collective unconscious, by mankind, and so is in effect an experience or idea that is shared by all races and cultures. Now, he identified 12 archetypes, all represented by mythical creatures, and he explained how they all reside within our subconscious. He explains how they're kind of like a roadmap that has lived within us and existed throughout history. Now, there are 12 motivations, and each of us has one that dominates over all others and is what drives us and forms our personality. Now, discovering and understanding what your overarching archetype is can actually help you to answer questions such as, you know, the ultimate life question of who am I? So there are 12 archetypes created by Carl Jung, and they all represent an idea, emotion or power. They show what drives someone forward and what sort of traits an individual with that dominating archetype might have. So let's jump into discussing these. Now, the first archetype is known as the ruler, which represents control. It is all about creating order amongst chaos and bringing structure to the world and your life. Now, an individual whose ruler archetype dominates can be stern and strict but is very organised and responsible. Now, the second is the artist, which represents creativity and innovation. Someone whose artist's archetype dominates tends to be extremely imaginative and inventive, and they like to create things that have a lot of meaning behind them. Now, the overarching aim of the artist is to help provide structure to the world. The third is known as the caregiver, which represents service and helping others. Their main focus is on helping and protecting others, and so it is often represented in books and films as the mother figure. Someone who has a dominant caregiver archetype is very nurturing, generous and extremely selfless. The fourth archetype is known as everyman and represents belonging. This type is all about seeking a place where you feel comfortable and where you belong. It is a universally known idea that people like to make connections with others and settle down somewhere where they feel safe. So someone whose main archetype is the everyman is seen as being supportive, grounded and very faithful. Their priorities are the people in their close circle and making them feel included and loved. Now, the fifth archetype is the innocent and is all about the universal idea of safety. It connects to a part of every individual that yearns for paradise and a sort of spiritual peace. Now, the innocent individual is motivated by romance, happiness, safety and optimism. 
The sage is the sixth archetype and similar to innocence is all about the desire to embark on a spiritual journey and find a sense of paradise by using wisdom. The sage is motivated by trying to help the world gain more knowledge and insight. A sage can be shown through a mentor, teacher or an advisor as they try to guide others and help them to expand their intellect. The seventh archetype is the explorer who yearns and strives for freedom. They tend to want to go on adventures and not be tied to any one place. This links well to the universal desire that almost all of us recognize, which is to travel and not to be confined within small spaces. They tend to seek out thrills and risks and can be quite daredevil characters. The eighth is the outlaw and is all about liberation. They thrive off rebellion and revolution and aren't afraid to stand up for what they believe in. They will rebel against authority if they see fit and they are often very outspoken characters. The ninth is the lover and represents intimacy and they strive to find a companion with who they can share their life and their passions with, which to them is the most important thing. They search to create intimate moments when they can, and they strongly believe in commitment and loyalty. Don't worry, we're nearly there. The tenth archetype is the jester. This represents pleasure and humour, and they are usually an individual who searches to connect with others and make them happy by making them laugh. They tend to strive off fun and often like to cause a bit of mischief. When presented in films and books, they are usually the comedian of the story and they are almost always represented as someone's best friend. Number 11 is the magician who searches to leave their mark on the world via power. Their ultimate motivation is to try and make dreams turn into reality and to get people to believe in the extraordinary. They open people's imaginations and help to expand people's horizons when it comes to what they believe in. Now the final and 12th archetype is the hero, which similar to the magician, aspires to leave their mark on the world, but they try to do this via mastery. A hero is on a mission to make the world a better place. And people who have this as their dominant archetype tend to be courageous, bold and brave. So after all that, you might be a bit confused and, and not really fully understand what exactly an archetype is. So the best way to get your head around it is to look at some examples of where archetypes have been used in films and within books. The main example of an archetype is kind of within literature, where you have a central character or situation that represents an overarching and universal theme. So for example, the hero. Now, in a sense, Harry Potter is the central archetype in the Harry Potter franchise. And Hercules is the hero in the book and film Hercules. There are, of course, other branches of archetypes. And so in any one book or film, you'll actually have lots of different archetypes represented. This is because each person, theme or situation will represent a different idea shared by mankind. So, for example, in Cinderella, you have the mother figure depicted as the fairy godmother and she represents how a mother guides and helps their children and really how she looks out for them. So this links to the archetype of the caregiver. This is something that's well known all over the globe and really that a mother represents care and comfort. And so when presented in a film, it is something that a lot of people can relate to and fully understand. Now an archetype might not always show a positive image. For example, the wicked stepmother in Cinderella can represent how sometimes people live in a non-traditional family and can actually go through a lot of struggles and issues at home. It also represents a universal image that can also be a bit of a stereotype of children not getting on with their step-parents. Another example is the doppelganger. You must have had someone come back from holiday before and they've said, I saw someone who looked exactly like you on the plane they must have been your doppelganger. 
Well, this word means a lot more than just someone who resembles you in appearance. A doppelganger is actually an example of an archetype. It represents the shadow or mirror image of an individual, except it shows their darker or evil side. For example, if you've seen the Vampire Diaries, you might remember how Elena had a doppelganger who was a meaner and more evil version of herself. It is also shown in Hamlet when an apparition of his father, now the father represents the doppelganger, comes to him and puts the idea of revenge into his mind. An archetype doesn't always have to be shown for a character though. It can also be shown through situations. For example, almost all films and novels involve a character taking some form of a journey. Now the journey can be emotional, spiritual, or maybe shown through a change in behavior, or perhaps shown by someone getting a job that they've always dreamed of. The journeys are usually things we have all experienced in some way, and so we can relate to it and, and understand it. For example, when a character in a film is trying to find themselves and kind of fit in at school, this is something that many people can understand. Many have experienced bullying or felt they don't belong somewhere and have therefore gone through their own personal journey of overcoming this and finding peace within themselves. So why is it good to think through archetypes? Well, if archetypes were used more in our language as a way to describe ourselves and others, and there was a universal understanding of what each one meant, then it would actually prevent so much conflict and make the world a much more peaceful place. This is because archetypes are not good or bad. They all have a positive and a negative side and are simply descriptions of what motivates us and what our ultimate goals in life are. Archetypes are also extremely relatable as they each have a specific explanation and there is pretty much something there to suit everyone. So with that, and the limited number of 12 archetypes, if they were universally used as part of communication, then I'm sure many of us would be able to relate and connect with others a lot more easily. Archetypes are a great concept as they can actually allow us to understand ourselves more. As they represent the different ways that people are motivated, you can sometimes realize what your ultimate goal and drive in life is by seeing which archetype you are drawn to the most. After hearing the 12 archetypes listed above, I'm sure many of you have related to a specific one or two. And so maybe it has made you realize what is the most important thing to you in life, whether it be knowledge, love, caring for others, or being in control. Finally, archetypes are great as they're adaptable and the one that dominates our minds can change depending on what situation we find ourselves in. For example, if we find ourselves in an environment where we need to learn, such as in school, then our sage archetype might take over. Alternatively, if we are in a situation where we need to look after someone else, such as if you're babysitting or if you have a child, then the caregiver archetype might take over. So when you become a parent, your archetype order might completely shift as your priorities and desires change. We are therefore all very likely to have experienced and had many dominating archetypes, which can allow us to have a deeper understanding of others when they act in a certain way. So there you have it, pretty much everything you need to know about archetypes. Hopefully now you might understand more about why people act the way that they do. Or maybe you now even understand more about yourself and what motivates you. Archetypes bridge any and all languages and can help bring people so much closer together and grow our sense of empathy. So finally, have a think about it. What archetype do you think dominates your mind? Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe for more content like today and tune into our next episode to learn all about auto-suggestion. I'll see you next time. At Sparta Group, we are keen to hear your thoughts about the topics discussed today. So please tweet us at Sparta underscore health or visit our website for more information and support.